Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77. We're back on my Create World, and we're going to get right into it now. So last time we were here, we built this andesite alloy maker. Basically, it's taking the andesite alloy from the mine, or sorry, the andesite cobble from the mine, and mixing it with the algal bricks, which makes up the andesite alloys. We basically have this process automated, and that's excellent. So, what's next? Well, we need to fix this. This is the next part because we're going to basically need to organize this into logs and trees and sticks and apples. And we need to get that over to here so that we can make uh, the kinetic mechanisms. Okay, we're going to look at the quests right here so we can see what we're doing. Basically, we got to make, uh, using saws, take our logs and strip them down to stripped logs, then to planks, and then to slabs. So just kind of like three saws in a row. That'll be pretty easy. And then we take the uh, plank, or sorry, the planks, the uh, slabs here and combine it with andesite alloy in a deployer system, okay? So we're gonna look at the kinetic mechanisms. You can see this right here. Take a slab, it goes through a deployer that has andesite alloy, a second andesite alloy, and I, don't, I can't talk right now, and a saw, okay? So, and that will automate those kinetic mechanisms. And so that's the goal today. But first thing first, we have to get this sorted out uh, right over here. So let's see, we're gonna basically take the output here and I'm not sure if we can just put it onto the belt right now or if we can go right away. I think we're going to just do a belt right here below here. It is a little bit lower than what I would like. We could modify that. I don't know. Some of the stuff's in the ground because of positioning. And this belt would be probably a little lower even um, down here. I'm not sure I like that, but uh, we'll see how this works. Let me get some uh, materials for shafts and some belts and make a belt here that'll work with this. All right, so we have our chest here. This is where all of the output from the tree farm is going. We're going to put a belt that goes from there to there. And eventually, I'm going to have a funnel here that will output the stuff to the belt. And then up here, we're going to run another belt from here to here. And this is where we're going to have some storage drawers that will act as our filter. So I have those created right here. I don't know why that one's separate. That's interesting. But anyway, we're going to put that right there. And basically, we want all of the uh, byproducts of this process to be in these drawers. Did they just go the wrong way? Oh, I didn't, they're just trim. I gotcha, okay, that's why they were separate. So I gotta set these up here in a second. Um, but anyway, so we'll take the, all the products first so that each one of these is, is a separate thing. Like for instance, we wanna have apples. We'll grab an apple, we'll put that in here and we'll lock it down. We'll do the same thing for sticks and for saplings. So that the last piece is the actual logs. These two belts need to run in the same direction. So what we're gonna use instead of some gears, we're gonna use an encased chain drive, okay? We're gonna go over here real quick. And then encased chain drive basically is just made of andesite casings, iron nuggets, and shafts, which have that on us already. And so we're gonna get those. And what basically, they work similar to gears, except for gears usually change rotational direction each time you put a new cog. This will chain together. So basically, whatever direction this belt is going, that belt is going. So that's good. Now we really have to get provide power to this belt, and I'm wondering if we can just use this belt right here, this drive right here, to run over to this belt, okay? So that's probably something I can do here. I'm going to dig down here. We can see it's got a rotational direction of going uh, to the right. So we just need to get some cogs and some shafts here. Let's get some of these cogs. We may need to have some sort of a gearbox that might make it easier to run across here, but let's just go up here once. Okay, there is that level, and you can see that that is turning that direction. So if we were to put another gear here and one this direction, it should change it. If it's going, well, let's look at this again. It's going the wrong way. It's turning to the counterclockwise. Over here, we want to change it to clockwise, right? So we really just need one gear, not two. Um, we got to change it from here, though. So let's get a couple of shafts here. Now, you can use belts also for power. We could do that. Um, or we could just do a bunch of chain drives, the same thing. So if we put on here a cog wheel, doing this all kind of like on the fly, guys. Okay, and then we change one over, right over here. I wonder if we can just do this. That's not what I meant to do there. I wonder if we can just run it straight across. <laughs> For now. One there. And there we go. Okay, so I know that looks ugly, and we will change that a little bit later. Uh, that's fine though. So now what we have to do though is we have to get a some more of these funnels I think I've got one funnel on me Which means we have to take an andesite machine and put it into the 
smithing table to get four funnels. So we'll do that. And funnel. There we go. And we have five. So I think we're just about ready to go. We're going to set these funnels up on this side over here. So they're going into these bins. And all we have to do is put one down here to unload. And there we go. Logs are coming out. They'll go into the proper spot. You can see they're picked up automatically. And that's excellent. So basically now we have this kind of whole thing sorted out. I need to clean this up a little bit. But we're going to work on that in a bit when we get the saws engaged. For the next bit, we're going to have to have saws to make saws again. Well, that was saw blades. Do we have a saw in here already? Um, I don't see one. So let's make up some saw blades. We want three saws. We need lead. We need iron sheets and ink iron nuggets. And I have those here with me. So we have three of those. There we go. Saw blades. And now we take those uh, anisite machines over to the smithing table and put in the saw blades. We should get three of these saws. And there we go. Now, I know I'm going to need some more funnels. So I'm going to just do that right now. And there we go, we have that. And so uh, over here, we're going to want to take the output from this storage drawer, which is our logs. We're going to have them on a belt and then from a, uh, not really on a belt, probably right into a saw, I would think. Okay, let's see if we can do this right here. Nope, that's not the orientation. Now we want this to be basically top down. There we go. Like this. Three saws. Now they have to be going in the same direction so that when the logs go here, they get through stripped. They go through and get planks, and then they go to slabs. I've got the saws in place, and I think they got them going the right direction. They actually turn counterclockwise compared to the belt, which is going clockwise, okay? And I've used some of these chain drives, so I can keep these in sync. If you use cogs, then one of them will be out of sync with the others. So I think we're good there. So on top of this piece of dirt, I'm going to put a storage drawer, and inside of that, what our goal here is to get slabs. I'm going to put a slab in there and lock it in. There we go. And I'll take that slab back out, okay? Now, what we want to have here is basically we want to basically say specifically what we want these to do. So if we go through the whole process here, uh, we need to have an oak log that's stripped. I don't have that yet. We have to have a plank, and then we have to have a slab. And that didn't work either. I also need to make an axe, it looks like. So we're going to do that in just a second here. Let's see, recipe filter, there we go, a slab. And so if we get a log here... We have to put it down. We have to strip it. We need an axe. Let's take a stone axe here. Uh, there we go. We need a sticks, which is nice that we have sticks now. All separated out into the drawers. My axe broke. That's what happened, guys. It broke. Uh, we're going over here. We're going to strip it. There we are. And we have this. And we say now, put that into this filter. There we go. So if I start to put a funnel here it should output the logs it should go through the process of making this and then put it into this uh storage drawer here so this is an input storage drawer and this is an output and here we go you can see the log is coming out there it was stripped you can see it should be made into planks and then it should be going through and of course there's four planks here because of the way the recipe is so it will pause and wait while this makes slabs and the next one goes through and you can see we have four slabs and then we're going to have now six slabs so it is working fine we now have the ability to make strip logs planks and slabs let's go over to the quest here and check that off we made that yes we made that yes and made that yes okay so now we're basically just about to the point of getting uh the kinetic mechanisms um automatically generated you can see the anisite alloys and the uh are the slabs were basically needed for this Let's go look at that again. We're looking at the kinetic mechanism. I actually have it up here. And again, this is just taking a slab, putting it on deployers and uh, the depots here. Once is andesite, second is andesite, and a saw. So we'll have to just come right out of this section right here and do that. So uh, let me start to think about how I want to do this. So continuing on from the slabs here, I've got a belt that is five blocks wide. Basically, the middle three are going to be where the deployers are. And then, of course, we have the output. Well, that will be the kinetic mechanisms. So I'm going to lock that kinetic mechanism in right now. Put one in there and doing that. That's fine. Now, we have to make some deployers. Now, deployers are used uh, typically with gold. Let's go over here and look at this. I think, do we have any up there? I don't have it up there yet. Okay, looking up at the what I've bookmarked. So basically, it's andesite machines plus the golden hand. Four golden sheets and an andesite alloy. So I have all of that on me. So we're going to make three of those. Run it over here to the smithing, not smithing table, the smith, yes, the smithing table, not the stone cutter. 
and we're gonna put those in there and three into site machines. And now we have three deployers. So we're gonna put those down right here, okay? Now, these three deployers, they need to have different things on them. Um, we're gonna have to uh, figure that out. One of these though, we're gonna have to give the saw. Now we have a saw right now and it's the last one. So we're trying to get this to go into this guy's, there we go, he's holding the saw. He, is it he, she? I don't know, I called it a he. Anyway, uh, we want to get andesite alloy into uh, these spots as well. So we're going to basically go and get a barrel. I have one barrel here. I need to get some more barrels. So let's see about getting some planks. Look at all those planks we got there. Okay, got some wood. Let's make some planks. We can have some stuff, make another barrel. We're gonna right now, at least for now, not automatically pull the andesite alloy from the chest because we don't have a way of really splitting it evenly like round robin between these two spots. So we're just going to manually put into barrels for now, which is just fine. So let's go up here. What I want to have is a chute on each of these. So we'll put this here and here, and then we'll put the barrels on top of each of these. So there's one and there's two. And that should be just about it. Um, let's load this up with some andesite alloy. So if we go over here, let's see how much we have. Okay, so let's do four in stacks in each barrel. There we go. One, two, three, four. And you can see it's unloading that, and this guy is now holding the andesite alloy. Let's do this again. One, two, three, four. And that one's ready to go. So we should just have to be add funnels here, and it should start outputting kinetic mechanisms. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, this one is receiving, and this one is putting out the slabs. Here it goes. And I'm not sure why. Oh, they're not powered. Oh, that was a derp. Okay, now I've got this working. Now they are all powered. They are running. So I, all I need to do, I think, is start to put these funnels back. Okay, let's try this again. That one is inputting into the storage drawer, and this is output. It should bring in slabs. Slab goes on. It, there it goes. One, two, and three. Then there we are, guys. It's making connect mechanisms. You can see it's going up. We've got now four. We've got five. Oh, we're all automated this. This is excellent because now it's really easy to make the uh, andesite machines. All we do is just grab an andesite casing and surround it by the connect mechanisms. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so let's go on and look at the quest here really quick. So we have definitely automated that. That's excellent. And we got two directions here. We already have the arming the deployer. Now this saw will eventually wear out. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but we can do that in a bit. So now chapter one is complete, congrats. Now you have a passive supply of kinetic mechanisms. This is bound to change the pace of it. Before moving on, check back through your factory and search for any major bottlenecks. It'd be a shame if a really efficient andesite generator is held back only by the sand not coming in quickly enough. Yes, that's true. So we've got some issues here and a couple things I can think of is that first of all, this is manual, so that takes some time, okay? The other thing is over here is the strainer here getting the sand. You can see that the actual the strainers are done. This is not producing any clay at all, which means this whole system is stopped. Fortunately, we have a lot of bricks. We don't really need it, but um, we should probably get some new strainers. Let's try to see if we can do that. If you remember to make the strainers, we have to use the straw. We basically put that in a four by four or two by two grid for items there. And we have 15 of those. And then to make the strainers, it's just that and sticks. And we should have five strainers. There we go. Now we have to be able to get up there uh, to place these strainers, I'm going to uh, take some of this and put it down into my... They don't stack, and uh, that's a pain. I don't know why sometimes some items stack and some don't, but whatever. Uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to uh, climb up really high, and so that we can get into this section here. And you can see we don't have any strainers here anymore, so we'll put one there. And there. And there. And there we go. Now there's gotta be some way to automate this so we don't have this kind of a bottleneck, but I'm not quite sure of how to do it yet. But uh, we should start to see some sand coming down here any second. Make sure this is working. Come on, sand. You would think it would start working. I've not seen anything yet. This is interesting. I don't know why this would not work. Uh, did we get rid of the water? No, the water's fine. It should be working just fine. If we look at the uh, strainer here, it is working. So why are we not getting any items? Let's go back down and take a look here. Uh, okay, we are. We are getting sand. Okay, so it is working. It'll make some clay. 
and that clay will then uh, over here on this belt over to this mixer. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so that's one of the bottlenecks we have here. The other one, I think, is just, you know, we got things that are slow. Washing slow. The drying is slow. This is manual. I think we're okay for now, though. I think this will work and should get us going uh, along with the quests. Speaking of quests, let's see if we can get this marked as completed. We'll do that. We have to make an andesite machine or have one. And I don't have one, so let's grab eight of these. Just like that, we have some kinetic mechanisms, and we have to get an andesite casing, which we have. Now, it sounded like something broke there. I, like we ran out of andesite. That's probably what happened, so I would have to load that again. That's the bottleneck I was talking about. Okay, so let's uh, see. We put all of these around there and make an andesite uh, machine, right? Okay, quests. We check mark that. We get 16 more kinetic, me kinetic mechanisms. We get some dust and some iron ingots. And that is the end of chapter one. Now let's look here some more because there's some other things going on. Um, if we look back at the overview here, you can see we did this. And there's two different things. But if you remember in an earlier episode, I said we should probably do these side wings as we get to them. The next side wing, which is this right here, is Rubber Tycoon 1A. While copper machines will definitely be required going forward, full automation of uh, their ingredients is completely optional. After hitting the check mark above, additional quests in the first chapter will be revealed. So there's actually more to do. Okay, so let's go back to the first chapter. And you can see after this, we've got a few things here. One is uh, don't chop. Is basically says liquid resin can be extracted from healthy trees and arboreal extractors. The more the merrier. So we've got to get four of the extractors, and that will be okay. So and you know we have that over here. So let me uh, get those out. I know I put these up here, but I haven't used these last four. But that's fine. We'll, we'll just get those really quick. Use an axe. Hold on to these four, and we'll see about getting this quest. And there we go, that quest is done. Automatically, there's no reward. So now gather the resin via a network of fluid pipes and use a basin press to solidify it. And that is where we are currently, guys. And that's probably going to be for the next episode is working on plumbing here, plumbing these up, getting other, uh, the fluids getting down to rubber. I think that's all we have to do is get down the rubber and cure it. And then we make the sealed up, which is these types of things with uh, connected mechanisms with rubber. And we're going to basically make this as a copper machine. We're not there yet, guys, but we're almost there. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got time for today. If you like this video, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them down in the comment section. And if you'd like to be notified of the videos that I produce, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get all the notifications, okay? Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.